What does it take to build a world-class company? For Secor, the journey has been a span marked by triumphs in a world of exploding technology and innovation, a period where the landscape of offshore production continued to push the boundaries of depth and distance and one of rapid fleet expansion to meet customer demands worldwide. It was a path that has witnessed years of dedicated service by you, the world's finest marine professionals. The seeds of what eventually would become Secor were sown in late 1989, when an investor group led by Charles Fabricant, a New York attorney specializing in environmental and maritime law, agreed to purchase NICOR Marine from Illinois utility NICOR Inc. When, uh, when Secor uh, acquired what was then NICOR Marine, we were operating 35, 36 boats. All of this was pulled under, under one flag, under the Seacor Marine flag. The NICOR fleet consisted of 35 vessels, and the company was managing another half dozen for third parties. Most of the boats were operating in the Gulf of Mexico, but importantly for the company's future, a handful of supply vessels were active in Africa. The NICOR acquisition immediately positioned Secor as a player in the international marine transportation market, a market that offered significant challenges, yet promised unlimited opportunities. That uh, 30 boat grew to an international uh, operation with uh, more than a couple of hundred boats working worldwide. Uh, obviously, with that much growth in such a short period of time, uh, it does present some challenges. On the other hand, with each one of these acquisitions, uh, in addition to the offshore equipment, the boats that we acquired, we acquired a lot of uh, people with quite a bit of experience in our industry. So I think it also presented a lot of opportunities for uh, Charles Fabrican and the management team to take advantage of that, uh, that experience and that knowledge and uh, helped us in, in seeking additional opportunities for growth around the globe. Uh, Charles saw that as an opportunity because at that time the Gulf of Mexico was in an extreme depression. There were hundreds of boats laid up. In 1992, when others, wary of the lasting effects of the early 90s recession, pulled in their horns, Secor saw opportunity and seized it. Uh, I was lucky to get involved in this industry, the offshore industry, at a time when it was bumping along a bottom. I've been fortunate and lucky to encounter throughout the 25-year journey many dedicated, hardworking, knowledgeable people who have been patient to teach me the business uh, and have been focused on making Secor a success. It is also luck that for the last 25 years, the cost of capital has continued to decline and that has also been a tailwind for the business. The company went public, supplying additional capital to an aggressive management team focused on growth, and the acquisition chase was on. In 1995, Secor purchased John E. Graham and Sons, whose fleet included seven offshore supply vessels, 37 crew boats, five mini supply vessels, and 79 utility boats. But I uh, met Granville Conway, who was a confidant of Charles Fabricant and a director at the time in New Orleans, and we drove to buy a battery so Granville could sort of touch and feel the investment we just made in Johnny Graham and Sons. And uh, we both agreed that this was uh, one of the best run marine companies we'd ever seen. And uh, Granville, who anybody who remembers Granville will know he was uh, long on wisdom and, and pretty short on words, but his parting advice to me was, well, we have to figure out how not to screw this up. By 1995, the name Norman McCall had become synonymous with crew boats in the Gulf of Mexico. And when Mobile Oil needed a fast supply service in Nigeria, the company suggested that Secor call on Norman for his expertise. 
were the type of boats that the McCall fleet had and consisted of, Charles and I both felt like there was an opportunity to expand into the overseas market. It was and has proven to be true and successful. What I expected for the future was to continue working with Secor, building new boats and improving on their capabilities. A joint venture between Secor and McCall Boat Rentals ensued, and one year later, the companies merged, creating a global service in offshore crew boats and setting in motion plans for new technology that would revolutionize the industry. The acquisitions continued as the Secor team searched worldwide for companies with solid assets that were a good fit for the Secor business model. Forty-nine vessels were acquired from Smith International in 1996. The acquisition of Galaxy Marine Service in 1997 added an additional two dozen vessels to the fleet and dozens more from the acquisitions of Seahorse Marine and Gilbert Cherami Marine in 2001. Well, back in 1997-98, uh, I had the pleasure of having a couple of dinners with Mr. Charles Fabricant, and we spoke somewhat of about possible acquisition of Gilbert Cherami boats. Later on in 1999, uh, we had the pleasure of him coming down to cut off and spending an afternoon with my family. And at that point, after about two or three hours of spending time with him, uh, when he left, I turned to my father and I, says, I said, Dad, I says, what you thought of Mr. Charles? And he looked at me pretty clearly and he says, you know, Brian, if it meets with your agenda, he says, my great advice to you would be to follow him. In 2005, Secor Holdings purchased Fort Lauderdale's Seabulk International, a company with its origins dating back to 1958, starting with a fleet of just two tugboats. Seabulk had become a leader in offshore support services and in operation of Domestic Jones Act and international tankers, and now had 2,500 employees worldwide. The acquisition added about 100 offshore service vessels to the Seacor Marine Fleet and expanded operations to the Gulf of Arabia, Brazil, and the North Sea. We're, a very, we're, we're very diverse in our operation in Dubai. We have bases in Africa, in Angola, Congo, Ghana, offices in Doha, in Qatar, Baku in, the, in Azerbaijan, and in Singapore. So we're, we're a very diverse group. In 2007, Seacor Marine launched the Cruiser Class. The Seacor Cheetah was the first in a line of state-of-the-art crew transport vessels which brought unprecedented speed, capacity, and passenger comfort to oil field passenger transport. Following the success of the Cheetah, Seacor launched the Lynx and the Leopard, packed with even more deck cargo capacity, higher speeds, superior seakeeping, and state-of-the-art navigation and communications technology. Seacor, with their global presence, allowed the large FSVs to venture into other areas of the world where they were not previously found. They never stayed satisfied with the status quo. They constantly strive to refine and improve each vessel class technology is filtered down to the offshore. And so I think we benefited from some advances that weren't possible before. Uh, whether you take DP from, you know, nobody said, oh, everyone said, oh, you don't need DP on a crew boat, to now, you know, if it doesn't have DP too, it won't even be considered. Two new cruiser class ships are under construction. The Seacor Puma is scheduled to be in service in the first quarter of 2017, with the Seacor Panther to follow a few months later. Along the way, in order to complement Secor Holdings' diverse business lines, other companies were added to the Secor family of companies, offering environmental services, inland river transportation, aviation services, ocean transport, and harbor towing. One of the key strengths of Charles is his trading. He's just a, a tremendous trader, and he's been, he has a real, you know, it's in his gut. And I think that's, you know, Secor Marine was the start of the company and really, you know, we're trading assets uh, of, we call them dumb steel, but how to trade them is, an, is a very uh, intelligent business. And it's really been building upon that, uh, always within hard assets. Uh, so you look from our inland barges, which is actually where Secor started, even before Secor Marine, uh, up through tankers and uh, harbor tugs and helicopters. Uh, it's, all, it's all about the assets, and it's all about capital allocation and how you trade them. And, and Charles, you, there's no books how to trade, 
and I've learned a lot from him, and he's, he's been a great mentor in that. Um, but it really, uh, every day you learn something new and something uh, exciting. But also something that's, uh, I think, unique to, to Secor is Charles's cultivation of talent and the type of talent that not only he seeks and retains, but he trains. And I think you take folks like, uh, like John Gellert, who's, who's been within the company since his uh, early 20s, uh, barely out of college and certainly, uh, certainly could be molded. Uh, and you know, ultimately, John makes a lot of those hard decisions, uh, I think, just like Charles does. And it's not unique just to the Marine Group. It's, it's something that you see within the, all of the, the lines of business. And even today, the growth of Sea Corps continues. In 2012, 18 lift boats were acquired from Superior Energy. This acquisition put Sea Corps Marine into shallow water offshore construction. The self elevating workboats provide mobile yet stable work platforms, crane capabilities, and living accommodations for work crews performing services to offshore oil and gas production platforms. More recently, a joint venture between Secor and Montco Offshore was formed to leverage Secor's global footprint in order to offer shallow water construction services internationally. Although he would be the first to deflect attention from himself, no telling of the history of Secor would be complete without recalling the vision, business acumen, ethics, and simple dignity of Charles Fabricant. Here's what some of his friends and colleagues had to say. I met Charles 20 plus years ago and, and from day one he was an unusual cookie in our industry. Although he had a shipping background and a family that had a shipping background, jumping into the offshore oil service industry was something different. And from that day on, Charles has amazed me in everything he's ever touched and everything he's ever done and his unbelievable canny strategy as how he approaches business. I've heard of Charles Fabricant for many years before I actually met him and uh, at one point we eventually had an opportunity to do a joint venture together that was good for Secor and also good for Edison's West Offshore and uh, it was an honor to be asked to participate in a, a joint venture with uh, such a company as Secor and uh, especially individual uh, as Charles is uh, uh, like Charles Fabricant especially innovative banking uh, relationships and banking arrangements. And uh, uh, in some way, he's kind of showed us how to make money in the boat business and great considering you as one of my friends. As a businessman, he's extremely intelligent. He's, he runs a company in a very effective way. As I say, it's very well resourced and that makes our job a lot easier. We can make the right decisions for the long run. But Charles has done a, to me, a tremendous job of, of leading vision um, to, to a, a corporate opera operation, but instilled, to me, small value factors into their business. Maintain that culture from c -Corp corporate, I think, is a, is a tremendous attribute to Charles. I, I think he's, um, besides understanding the total part of the business, you know, which is you know, very rare that I've seen, you know, usually you're good at certain things. He understands it all. He's been there, he's done that and all. I think he's backed up by a great family. Uh, he's backed up by his, 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 his values that he's always instilled in everyone. And he stays that course. And it's been so easy to follow. Uh, and, and, and you're proud in doing so because I think that's the people you want to associate yourself with. And just like Robert, John, and Charles, and other leaders in SeaCore. Anyone can fire off an email and they'll address it. And, uh, and I think that's, that's important. So one thing I admired, although he's a very successful businessman, he never let life go past him. He'd always been to the latest show or movie. He would go to Italy on vacation. He would read good books. Somehow he managed to put life into not just making money. Uh, when you have a boss that says, keep your eye out for opportunities and you have the flexibility to go pursue them, well, things happen, good things happen. You know, through his hard work, his, he was a very demanding boss, 
But uh, between that and his intelligence and his just basic, decent humanity, he's just the type of person that uh, made you want to do your best for him in the Sea Corps team. Uh, Charles had fi found a, uh, a small fleet of lift boats that he wanted to acquire, happened to be in my region. I hadn't met Charles yet, so I wasn't really sure how to, how to take it, so I made some phone calls, asked people that I knew, started digging about the fleet. I didn't know a whole lot about lift boats at the time, but I knew a lot of people that did. Uh, and I worked, I don't know, hours upon hours to put together this, this fine report and a good email to go with it and explained it all. Uh, uh, hit, hit the send button, started packing my bag, and, and before I got out of the office, uh, Charles had already responded with about 35 more questions. In the end, turned out to be probably as much an exercise about finding out about the fleet, understanding if it's something that we, we wanted to acquire, uh, but at the same time, it was probably uh, geared towards training me as well. And he has inspired a great, great amount of loyalty. I mean, there's people that really, as I mentioned with the numbers and calm logic, uh, eventually wins the day or, and, you know, pay attention. Uh, he really is he's just a very level-headed individual that, you know, calmly analyzes situations and opportunities. And while giving us the flexibility to pursue a range of opportunities. And so that, that, that flexibility has been very important and very exciting. I would enter into any type of business or joint venture with Charles on a handshake. No lawyers or contract would be needed. Today, Seacor Marine stands as a global leader in offshore service, operating in every corner of the world where offshore drilling and exploration occur. When we asked all of the folks we talked to about what is at the core of Seacor's success, we got an overwhelmingly consistent response. Our people. Let's take all the business side out. Take the boats out, take the barges out, take the helicopters out. Seacor's greatest asset is our people. You know, all the way from, from Charles and then the Marine Group, all the way down to the, the young kid who's wanting to start out as a deckhand. Uh, you know, the, the people within this company are, are amazing. Grateful for, the, for this 25 years and it's taken a very exciting journey. Uh, the journey continues and uh, look forward to their continued uh, dedication, involvement, and uh, we've got to make it fun. A group, a group of uh, dedicated, loyal individuals who uh, work extremely hard and really appreciate their service. And, uh, you know, we might joke a lot about Rob Clemens and uh, Tony Weller, who uh, might be in the room or from afar, or from afar in Dubai, uh, but they lead a great team and they've uh, really built uh, a, a organization that uh, I would put up against anyone in the industry. It's been a privilege to work with all of them and I'm extremely appreciative of the time and effort that they put in and that those who may not be here now but preceded them have put in to make the company a success. Some of our personnel have saved lives, been helpful to third parties and made outstanding contributions in big and small ways to either others or the industry is extremely rewarding. And so this film is dedicated to you, the exceptional men and women, past and present, of Secor. You have our unending gratitude for the part you continue to play in our success. It's your dedication to our customers and to each other that is the glue that binds this company together. It's your willing embrace of our corporate philosophy and your competitive drive to be the very best that is the foundation and future of Secor.